over my life, all over my life. guys. Um, we look forward to what God's going to do with us, through us, and as we praise him today. And we're going to start by singing uh, What a Beautiful Name It Is. Thank you. 
Amen. If you could remain standing. Praise the Lord. Acts chapter 4, verse 7 through 13. The apostles are living and walking by the Spirit. And they are manifesting the power of God in their ministry. They're serving people. They're ministering to people. And God's power is being displayed in their midst. This message is how do we appropriate the power that's available to every believer into our life? And in the lives of the people we serve, like our children, our grandchildren. You serve them like Peter served the people, as a minister to the people. God has authorized you to minister to certain groups of people and then to the world. So how do we do that with great effect and great power? We see the title of this message is called The Invocation. And that is first and foremost how God's power is made manifested in this world. Let's see it. As Peter has just been used by God to heal a lame man who's been lame for 40 years. has just sat by the gate called Beautiful and begged and everybody knows this man. Now, the Sanhedrin, the unconverted ones, they have called Peter before them, Peter and John before them, and they're investigating this. They don't like it. Why? They had Peter and John brought before them and began to question them. By what power or what name did you do this? You see, they did something with great power. Do you and I want to minister, serve in that same power? With great effect. That's the question. And then how you do that. Then Peter, filled with the Holy Spirit, said to them, Rulers and elders of the people, if we're being called into account today for an act of kindness shown to a man who was lame and are being asked how he was healed, then know this, you and all the people of Israel. It is by the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, whom you crucified but whom God raised from the dead, that this man stands before you healed. Jesus is the stone you builders rejected, which has become the cornerstone. Salvation is found in no one else, for there's no other name under heaven given to mankind by which we must be saved. When they saw the courage of Peter and John, and realized that they were unschooled, ordinary men. They were astonished. And they took note that these men had been with who? These men had been with Jesus. And Jesus taught them, whatever you ask for in my name, it shall be done for you. And so what are they doing? They're invoking the name of Jesus over a lame man and God's miraculous power transforms him and it is for the glory of his name. And so how do we appropriate the power that's available to every ordinary unschooled man and woman just like it was them? The schooled people were astonished at them. The unconverted people were astonished. Friend, God's power works through not the agency of man, but through his holy name. And I pray that you'd learn together with me today from the master. Lord Jesus, we invoke your name as we have all service. But now I ask for you to teach and speak into the life of every person according to your will. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Now, the word invoke, invocation, means this, to appeal to a higher authority for help, support, 
or an action. And so, there is no higher authority than Jesus. In fact, all authority in heaven and, check this out, and on earth has been given to Jesus. So when you invoke his name in faith, there is no higher name. He's got all authority. And he's got all kinds of promises in his word that says this, if you do invoke my name, here's what I'll do. And I'm amazed at how many Christians do not invoke the name of Jesus anywhere except church. Because I was one of them. I was one of them who was okay with Jesus in church, but out in the world, I was ashamed of Jesus, and I hate to admit it, but I was. And I was afraid to mention the name of Jesus out there in this world. And folks, the name of Jesus needs to be shouted from the hilltops. The name of Jesus needs to be spoken in the, in the highways and byways of this world. The name of Jesus is how light comes into the darkness. His name is through which he manifests his spiritual power to God's people and to this world is through the blessed name of Jesus. And people leave it on the table. How many of us are guilty of that? Raise your hand, say amen, say oh me, oh my. How much, how many times have I left it on the table? Well, folks, God's not going to work. He really isn't. In spiritual power, unless you invoke his name. Now, he gives you many promises about what he'll do if you do this in my name to the glory of God the Father. Tremendous power. Tremendous authority. So that. Uh, check it out. Acts chapter 3, let's go back to what Peter did. Peter said to this lame man, silver or gold I do not have. But what I do have, I give to you in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, walk. Let me ask you this. What did Peter have there in verse 6? If he didn't have silver or gold, let me ask you, what did Peter have that he gave this man? He had spiritual power and he had spiritual authority and he gave it to that man through Jesus Christ our Lord. <laughs> That's what he had. He knew this. God had given him a spiritual gift. God had given him faith in his name. And that was made manifested to the world that day. Did you know that every person in this room has a spiritual gift? That God wants to manifest himself, his presence in this world through you. And when we invoke his name like he did and act in his name through that spiritual empowerment and authorization from heaven in your life... Awesome things happen, I'm going to tell you. Just like this, taking him by the right hand, he helped him up, and instantly the man's feet and ankles became strong. He jumped to his feet and began to walk. Then he went with him into the temple courts, walking and jumping and doing what? Praising God, you see, that they may see your good works and do what? Praise God. God wants His works to be manifested in this world, in the lives of people. That's called ministry. That's called serving people. And you want to do it in the power of God. And that is why we're having this conversation. You must invoke the name of Jesus in this world. I was afraid to. And I was ashamed to. Because this whole world, the flesh, the spirits of darkness, hate that name. And they, didn't, they don't like it. You can say God all you want to. There's a lot of civil religion in our world. And that's not me. I'm not a religious person. And many of you all aren't either. It's Jesus whom we serve. Amen. And if we're not going to be praying in Jesus' name, I'm not going to join in a civil prayer. I really am not. Because I don't know who they're praying to. I really don't. Civil religion, you, you have a, some sort of club meeting in the world. If they're not praying in Jesus' name, don't bow your head. And I would encourage you not to. You don't know who they're calling on. There are many false gods and false deities. They're, they're, <laughs> we call upon Jesus' name. And I am going to be faithful to his name 
just like these guys were. I've decided that in my heart. Lord willing, by the grace of God and only through Christ, I'm going to be able to do that. So Peter explains what happened to these people. He says, by faith in the name of Jesus, this man whom you see and now know was made strong, it is Jesus' name. And the faith that comes through him that has completely healed him, as you can all see. And so through your service to your family, to your extended family, to the world, this is the kind of power that you want to see made manifested in their life, displayed, demonstrated for the glory of God to the people you serve. You're going to have to invoke, the, you're going to need to invoke the name of Jesus. It's going to be your privilege but you're going to have to overcome something in your flesh like I did. Remember what I told you? I was ashamed and afraid. Not in church to invoke the name of Jesus, but at school. That's where I got saved, at school. Anybody still in school? In school. And so you know what I had to do, Chris? I just had to get over it. So I've got a neon green and black sign that says Jesus saves. Put it right on the back bumpers of my car. Not for anybody else, but for who? But for me. And then I noticed in the book of Acts that Peter and Paul and those guys were going to public places, synagogues, but also public places, and they were preaching the gospel. So I said, okay, okay, heart pounding. I know I got to get over this fear, so I did it. I went, I went out, probably preached to the biggest audience I've ever preached to, <laughs> was at my university campus as students were filing by to go to class. Captive audience, right? I really don't believe I did any good at all for them. Really, I don't. I was just a greenhorn. I mean, I was preaching Jesus, but it was good for me. I had to come out with it. I had to come out of the closet. I had to declare his name, his name from the mountaintops, his name in the highways, his name in the university campus, his name wherever we are, the blessed name of Jesus. It's how we serve. It's how we see God's name glorified if we do it in honor and reverence and uh, with love and all that that I was missing. Uh, but I did it, and I'm glad I did. Also in the classroom. 300 people, it was a huge classroom. There may have been more of that. There may have been 500 people. Usually a lecture, guy brought in a, uh, he was a psychologist, and he brought in a patient of his who shared his struggle with, uh, I forgot what he said it was, really. And does anybody have any questions or comments was said? My heart's going like this. you i said well i know i struggled with and i forgot what it was uh, until i gave my heart to jesus christ and got saved and god really helped me and i wondered if you had explored his spiritual life well i the hisses came right at me you know not from everybody but hiss <laughs> hey it's okay some people get saved and some people hiss but we are to proclaim the name of Jesus in this world and not be ashamed. And those were difficult things for me to do, as you can imagine. Can some of you imagine? I wasn't a preacher back there. God hadn't called me to preach. But what God had called me to do is serve in this world as his ambassador. He said, son, I'm going to send you into this world on business. On business. That means ministry. I'm going to use you in some way, but it's some way through you as, as I'm going to use you. You're going to have to speak forth my name, invoke my name, and I'll be with you, and I'll work, and my power will be displayed in your life and in your ministry. And that's how it was here. The name of Jesus is not a magic word or an incantation to, sup to uh, superstitiously say, no but an appeal to the person of the one true God of the universe. 
and his nature, his character, his attributes, so that, for instance, in your salvation, God, when you believe in the Lord Jesus Christ in your heart, then what must you do as an act of faith? You must call upon his name and you shall be what? God's power of the cross when you believe in your heart, God raised him from the dead, and confess with your mouth, Jesus is Lord. All the power 2,000 years ago in the precious blood of Jesus by his Holy Spirit will be demonstrated in your heart. All your sins will be washed away. The Holy Spirit will come and live in your heart and begin a new life. That's the power of calling upon his name. You don't call upon the name of Jesus, no salvation. Here's what it says. Salvation is found in no one else. For there is no given to mankind by which we must be saved. There's one path of salvation, and that's Jesus. Jesus is the way, the way, the truth, and the life. And so you must call upon his name. So, so when we baptize here at our church, in the baptistry, we say, what is your profession of faith? Do you know why we ask that? It's so that you can make your good confession of faith before men publicly from your own mouth. Because the Bible says, with your mouth, you confess Jesus is Lord. That's where it starts. That's where it begins. When we call upon the name of the Lord, you will be saved. Now, what's the name of the Lord? What is his name? His name is not thy. His name is not thee. His name is not Christ. Christ is the Greek word for Messiah. His name is Jesus, the God who saves. And in his nature, he has promised salvation to everyone who does what? In verse 10, in saving faith, turning from their sins and calling upon the name of Jesus, you shall be saved. You can expect it. You can believe it. You can have assurance in your heart. Why? Because embedded in an attribute of God that's manifested in his name is salvation. You're a God who saves. Jesus means God who saves, the one who saves. And so when you, you call upon his name, there it is. It is given unto you by God. Whoever calls upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. So what can you expect like that? You can expect salvation. Why? God's promised it, right? God's promised it. Is that the only promise in the Bible is salvation? <laughs> Folks, there are many promises in the Bible, and many of them that Jesus says, we must invoke his holy name, and then he will give us what we ask for. And so, what's, a, what's one? The presence of God will be with you. You'll know it. He'll be behind you, before you, beside you, everywhere around you, in you, invoking the name of the Lord. And he's not leaving, but your sense of his presence when you invoke his name. So, where two or three are gathered in my name, what did Jesus say? What did he promise? What did he promise here? To any two or three or more who are gathered in his name, what does he promise? Now, let me ask you this. In your family gatherings, how many of you invoke the name of Jesus in your family gathering? You see this promise? Don't leave it on the table. You want the presence of Jesus with you. So, don't leave that one on the table. Way too many of us, uh, we don't know the power of his name yet. And so, that's why this teaching. So, we're learning. And hallelujah, somebody may say, I thought the invocation is saying a prayer before the church service. <laughs> no, invocation is calling upon the name of Jesus together in faith. 
That can be a prayer. That can be a song. That can be whispering in your, in your breath as you walk along, um, as you gather in His holy name. The protection of God is a promise. If you call upon His name. Jesus had disciples and He wanted to keep them safe. Parents, you can relate. Jesus had disciples and He wanted to keep them safe. He has authority to do that. And here's what he prays to the Father. He says this. I will remain in the world no longer, but they're still in the world. And I'm coming to you. you, you any of you parents ever had a son or a daughter grow up and leave and go somewhere? Can you relate to this? I'll remain in the world no longer, but they're still in the world. And I'm coming to you, Holy Father. Protect them by the power of your name. Anybody who's got responsibility for people under you, I encourage you to memorize this little phrase, pray scripture. Here's what you can do. You can expect Jesus to respond to this. You can, you can expect it because he promises it. He says, Holy Father, protect them by the power of your name. How, how effective do you think Jesus' prayer is? Let me ask you this. Are you a follower? He's praying for followers who will come after these 12. His prayer is being answered. He's protecting us from evil by the power of your name, the power of the name of Jesus. Now, if you invoke Jesus, I want to speak Jesus. If I'm a father, I want to speak Jesus over my children. If I'm in authority over people, I want to be speaking Jesus over them. Why? Holy Father, protect them by the power of your name. Now, let me ask you this. According to Jesus, what's, what's his name? Father, protect them by the power of your name. So, what's, according to Jesus, what's his name? Remember, they're going to be protected by this. So, pretty important? Absolutely pretty important. What's his name? His name's Jesus. The name you gave me. That's what he says, the name you gave me. So that they may be one as we are one. Protect them, Lord, from the evil one. I've heard Dana's dad pray many times. It's always in it. It's always in it. That right there, it's always in his prayer. Nowadays, I'm included in it because he prays that prayer for his children and his grandchildren. I've not heard him pray without praying that. Why? He believes it, and I believe it. You believe it too. Let's see God's power manifested through our prayers. Praying, it's who he is. He's a God who is our shepherd. He's got a rod and a staff in his hand, and he'll protect them from the evil one. The provision of God is also promised. If, if. We ask in the name of Jesus. And I will do whatever you ask in my name so that the Father may be glorified in the Son. So, if that's your heart's desire, this is what you need to do is anything you ask for in his name that the Father may be glorified in the Son, it shall be done. If we invoke his holy name. It's power, power, wonder-working power in the name of Jesus. The power of God is also going to be made manifest like it was here in these moments. I'm going to be preaching on these verses tonight at communion. So, um, through the holy servant Jesus, the power of God is manifested. So, what can we do to apply this? Let's do practical ways that we can apply this into our life. Again, I've already mentioned several about speaking the name of Jesus. At some point in your work life, uh, when there is opportunity to shoot the breeze, does, does anybody have a workplace where there's shooting the breeze that goes on like by the water cooler type thing in a break room? Um, I know a lot of you work at home nowadays, but shoot the breeze time, in other words, that's a time where you can say whatever you want to. It's not working right now. At some point in there, uh, 
you need to be ready to speak the name of Jesus, to witness to what his holy name has done in your life and bring him. Folks, when we speak the name of Jesus, it charges the air with the presence of God. And so number one, first, first off, this is a very practical way. Ask your friend who has just shared a need or a problem. Ask them this. Can we pray together about this right now? Then do something bold. Then pray with them over the phone, at church, in your home, if it's a, a family member who shared something with you. Don't leave this on the table because it can turn a problem-sharing moment into a transformative experience by the power of God. Why? If, if you invoke the name of Jesus, the presence, the provision, the protection, and the power of God will be made manifest in that room, in that life of every heart who's opened up to Jesus and just brings it before him. You care if we share that with Jesus? I do that many, many times. Do you all know how many times I've been turned down? Do you mind if we lift that up to the Lord in prayer? I mean, stranger or not, it doesn't matter. Do you mind if we lift that up together in prayer just right now? Do you have a moment? Do you know how many times? I, it's innumerable that I've asked that, I guess, over the years. But I've been turned down once. I can't remember who it was or wh where it was, but I, do, I did mark it. It's the only time. Somebody, and, of course, they weren't a believer. But here's what. I encourage you to do is in your service to people for instance if you care about what you do if you're listening to somebody's problems you know somebody who can help them you really do amen and you can get them right there to help them if you'll stop and pray in the name of Jesus. Now, when you, when you open up your prayer, just go ahead and fire away with the big name of Jesus right there, okay? Don't wait to end on it. Come to him in his name. Dear Lord, we come to you in the blessed name of Jesus. We come to you in the name of Jesus. And Lord, we bring our problems, our struggles. What you want to do is speak Jesus over anxiety, and it brings calm. You want to speak Jesus, light, into depression, which is darkness, so that light can come into the difficult situation. Transformation. The power of God will be made manifested in whatever situation that is. Amen? How many of you would be willing to try that in your service to people, in your love to people? Now, when you pray, um, pray about a minute and a half and then start looking to shut it down. Amen? And in that prayer, just so you know, it doesn't, don't be real long, but give Jesus an opportunity. Lord, we just want to surrender these worries to you because we believe in you. Lord Jesus, we want to just let it go to you. Because we believe you're over all, in all, and through our everything. Lord Jesus. We lift up so-and-so that so-and-so is worried about. And we just ask that you would protect them by the power of your name, Jesus. Second, worship, adore, and reverence the name of Jesus. God inhabits the praises of his people. You lift up Jesus, and Jesus is going to be with you, speaking to you, lifting you up. You lift up Jesus, and he'll lift your countenance up. You can be having a tough day. You reverence and adore and worship the name of Jesus, and you're fixing to be lifted up. And so that's the power of Christ. And I love this worship and the worship of the generations. And especially, um, we're getting ready to sing a song from the young generation that is, they're, they're leading up. I love it. God is renewing a generation 
through worshiping Jesus and lifting up his holy name. And it's affecting all of us. Young people, young people, you're affecting all of us. I'm looking at a young person. You sent me a song two days ago. You sent it to Dana, and then Dana sent it to me. <gasps> the song is called, I Just Speak the Name of Jesus. What's it called? I Speak Jesus. Oh, my Oh, my. And it had two generations singing in that song with them. It had a young band about your age. And then it had uh, Darlene Check, who is uh, probably older than I am. And I love that beautiful music. Sing to the Lord a new song. Sing to the Lord one of the old favorites, too. Just let him transform your life through worship. And I love, the, I love seeing the young generation like this morning even at worshiping the Lord. He's renewing. He's renewing them. If we'll worship his holy name and lift it up and then persevere. And these guys are going to get ready to sing a song. And I will ask you to consider doing this. Some of you are going through tough battles and you've been battling it for a while. And I want to give you some encouragement from God's word to persevere and do hardship for his name. Usually when I come into hardship and it keeps getting harder and harder and it's going to be a long road, I'm taking that on myself. But there's a transaction that needs to be made in my heart. And that is when I make that suffering, long suffering, into an offering to God and willingly do the will of God and suffer it out and walk it out for his name. For his name. For Jesus' sake. That will turn and transform your suffering into an offering of praise and worship to God. An offering of worship to him. And Revelation chapter 2, Jesus speaks to the church and he says, You have persevered and have endured hardships for my name, and have not grown mere, weary. One of the things that we must do to not grow weary when this is a long obedience in the same direction every day, every day, every day, every day, and you don't know an end is in sight, if you'll make that transaction in your heart and willingly lift this up as an offering to Jesus and say, Jesus, I accept this. And I'm going to suffer for your name. I'm going to persevere for your name. I'm going to do whatever it takes. Then the renewing help and strength of God in the name of Jesus, for the name of Jesus, will come to you and see you through every day. And then desire to see the blessed name of Jesus lifted up in the world. Oh, make that your desire. Let the name of the Lord, David says, be praised both for now and and forevermore. If you've never been saved, we want to give you a decision. It's on the table. How do you access all this wonderful gift, the power of the cross to cleanse you from all your sin and give you a new life? It comes through repentance and faith in Jesus. And if you'll turn to him and call on his name out loud, wherever you are, right here at this altar or at home in the living room, and call upon his name. Jesus, save me. I turn to you with all my heart. Save me, dear Lord, from all my sins. He is faithful. And you can expect Jesus will save you. It's a promise in his word. But also this altar is open if you want to take what you're enduring now. And, and just bring it before him as a sacrifice and an offering to him. And say, Lord, for your holy name. For your holy name, I keep on. May your name be lifted up in Jesus' name. That's why I will serve you. That's why I will do what I do for your name's sake and for the love of your people. And dear Lord, during this invitation, I pray, Lord, for prayers to be lifted up, for your blessed name to be spoken over family. Lord, for those who are in authority over people, whether that's at work or in family, Lord, or at a ball team, 
Maybe they're captain of a ball team. I pray that you've given them that authority, and I pray that they would, that they would be able to call upon your name, speak the name of Jesus over those in their charge. Bless them, Lord, as they do. And as we all come before you under your holy name, that every knee will bow and every tongue confess Jesus Christ is Lord. Amen. <laughs>
Son of God and man, you are high and lifted up. All the world will praise your great name. Your great name. Your great name. that oh i love that worship god inhabits the praises of his people doesn't he wow and it's so we're so blessed to be so well led by you all who love to worship the lord uh, with music with your instruments and with your voices and we appreciate that well a um, couple of announcements one is about our kingdom stimulus offering number two there was fourteen thousand dollars donated to this and it's going out to nine mission partners, and uh, they'll receive a surprise check, each one of them, for $1,563. And I can just see so many smiles on their face when they're surprised. Now, George and Steve, you all won't be surprised at the Samaritan Inn to receive that because you just found out about it. But it's, it's a joy for us to give into your ministry to the homeless in the city of Roanoke, right there in our yard. And uh, may the Lord bless you as you do. In fact, we'll be praying for you. Why don't you come forward at the end of this service right now and, uh, and let's pray for you all as you minister to them. And uh, we just love that ministry down there. I can just see. And there's, there's nine that this goes to both in the valley and throughout the world. And we just thank God for that. Hey, Steve. Good to see you, brother. Amen. Amen. He's fixing to hug me, you know. I, 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 that, that, we haven't ever seen one another. That didn't happen. But um, we want to pray for them and just lift this up to the Lord. Dear Father, we thank you so much. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you so much for the privilege of sowing into the work of God that's going on in this world. Lord, and it's a lot. And we just, our heart goes out to them together with this offering. And we ask your blessing upon them and those that serve with them. We pray for the homeless of our city and Lord pray that the light of the knowledge of the glory of God in the face of Christ would come to each and every one of them and some of them know you dear Lord and may you encourage them at this time through this ministry too and Lord it is our privilege to serve with these folks Thank you, Jesus. Dear Lord, we love your name. And we also see you in the least of these, my brethren. You've done it unto me. And so, Lord, help us as we go, too, to serve those who are downtrodden wherever they may be. And there's plenty everywhere, including us at times. Help us to serve our brothers and sisters in Christ. And in our service, we found out today how to see Christ's presence in our midst serving us as we call upon the name of Jesus. Lord, you respond. You at work, you speak, you minister, you bring salvation, healing, comfort. And so we speak Jesus together as one through Christ to this ministry. Amen and amen. Praise the Lord. Love you all. Bless you. Amen. Well, our uh, ushers will lead us out and thank you all. We'll 